SS7, Fijali, Allentown, Pennsylvania, April 1908 Number 1 and Passant, I the growing popularity of true occultism and my zwanticism throughout the whole world has at last induced us to try and issue a monthly magazine that should be an honor to the Universal Father, to true occultism and my theism, and to those who stand for all that is good in humanity. There is also another matter which has induced us to try to see whether such an effort would be appreciated, and this is the fact that the leading occult or misty fraternities are without an official organ. This demand we will, therefore, meet, and the initiates will be such a magazine of which every true student will be proud. We shall not, and will not, cater to that class of sensationalists who would make you believe that by studying a course in hypnotism, which they will sell you for a few dole. Lars, you can be able to make men be your laves or cause. Dollars to roll into your hands, for such things are impossible, and not only are they impossible, but it is this class of human ghouls who have brought down shame and disgrace upon a science which holds within itself all the religions ever known. Not only does mysticism hold within itself all religious teachings, but it holds the histories of such religions, and it can point the way from the lowest step upon the ladder up to the very highest, which is imperial initiation, the finding of the Christ. We shall stand for all that is pure and good in all religious beliefs, we shall try to give to our readers the truth concerning all religious beliefs and will at all times try to get the truth concerning all matters which concern our work. While on the one hand we shall not uphold anything, nor anyone whom we know to be a fraud, yet it will not be our desire to tear down any system of thought, but rather to build up a pure and sublime system of philosophy, which shall appeal to the heart of mankind instead of to the mind. As so many do, it is not our desire to destroy, but to build up. Ours shall be an evolution and not a revolution. We believe that we are in a position to give to our readers that which none other can give them, for we are in touch with men and orders in every civilized country in the world, and we are in a position to obtain true facts concerning these matters from any part of the globe, and at short notice. Regarding the orders of which this magazine is the official organ, we need only say that the true teachings, so far as they may be given to the profane world, will be given from time to time, and one of our greatest desires is that the old Egyptian religion may be explained in these pages, so that all men, and more especially all Christians, may know that the Egyptian priests did not teach idolatry, but that the people themselves, not understanding the greater mysteries taught, formed idol worship inside of the teachings of the priests. These are but a few of the things that we shall hope to give to our readers, and all that we shall ask in return is that each and every one truly interested shall do all in his or her power to help and make this magazine a success. We all know that at the present age of commercialism nothing can be accomplished without the current coin of the realm. It will be our duty to do the work and obtain the material, but we must ask all those who have this great work at heart to do all in their power, so that we may receive the sinews of war wherewith to carry on the work, and if all will help in this we can assure each and every one that we will try to give them much more than they pay for. Under the postal ruling, it will be impossible for us to mail sample copies of this magazine, and therefore unless you who receive this copy subscribe but once you will receive no further copies. Will you be with us? Chapter T.I. Adam was the first inventor of arts, too, because he had knowledge of all things as well after the fall as before three, thence he predicted the world's destruction by water. For this cause, too, it came about that his successors erected two tablets of stone, on which they engraved all natural arts and hieroglyphical characters, in order that their posterity might also become acquainted with this prediction, one. According to the teachings in the Aurora of the Philosophers, of Paracelsus, translated by A. E. Waite, Paracelsus was both a Rosicrucian and a member of militia, too. Adam was the first man who is supposed to have known both good and evil, and is supposed to have been the first to have tasted the fruit that was forbidden. Adam is but a representation of the conscious man. 3. He who created man the same also cretensions. What has man in any place without labor, when the mandate went forth? Thou shalt live by the sweat of thy brow, as it were, a new creation, man, became a conscious being. When God uttered his fiat the world was made, art, however, was not then made, nor was the light of nature, but when Adam was expelled from paradise God created for him the light of nature when he bade him live by the work of his hands. In like manner, he created Eve for her special light when he said, 
in sorrow shalt thou bring forth children. Thus, and there, were these beings made human and earthly that were before like angelicals. Thus, by the word were creatures made, and by this same word was also made the light which was necessary to man. Hence the interior man followed from the second of creation. Note carefully what is said in ancient mystic oriental masonry in regard to this matter, that so it might be heated, and provision made in time of danger. Subsequently, Noah found one of these tablets under Mount Ararith, after the deluge. In this table were described the courses of the upper firmament and of the lower globe, and also of the planets. At length this universal knowledge was divided into several parts, and lessened the vigor and power. By means of this separation one man became an astronomer, another a magician, another a cabalist, and a fourth an alchemist. Abraham, that volcanic tube Cain, a consummate astrologer and arithmetician, carried the art out of the land of Canaan into Egypt, for, whereupon the Egyptians rose to so great a height and dignity that this wisdom was derived from them by other nations. The patriarch Jacob painted, as it were, the sheep with various colors, and this was done by magic. 5. For in the theology of the Chaldeans, Hebrews, Persians and Egyptians they held these arts to be the highest philosophy, to be learned by their chief nobles and priests. So it was in the time of Moses, when both the priests and also the physicians were chosen from among the Magi, the priests for the judgment of what related to health, especially in the knowledge of leprosy. Moses, likewise, was instructed in the Egyptian schools, at the cost of and care of Pharaoh's daughter, 6, so that he excelled in all the, 4, this would explain to us how these secrets of magic were brought into Egypt. There is no doubt but that the Garden of Eden, as we know it, was the lost Atlantis, and from Atlantis these mysteries of initiation were brought into Egypt. 5, this was accomplished by what was known as magic at that time, and what we of this day would call natural magic, it is the same as was taught by Agrippa, one of the founders of the Militia Crucifera Evangelica, soldiers of the crucifixion. 6. Moses was educated in the Kabbalistic schools at the personal expense of the daughter of Pharaoh. The finding of Moses in the river is simply a natural mystery which all wisdom and learning of that people, 7. Thus, 2. Was it with Daniel, who in his youthful days imbibed the learning of the Chaldeans, 8. So that he became a Kabbalist. Witness his divine predictions in his exposition of those words, mene, mene, tussulfers, these words can be understood by the prophetic and Kabbalistic art. This Kabbalistic art was perfectly familiar to, and in constant use by, Moses and the prophets. The prophet Elias foretold many things by his Kabbalistic numbers, so did the wise men of old, 9, by this natural and mystical art, learn to know God rightly. 1, they abode in Halea's laws, and walked in Kabbalists understand. Moses was educated in the same school which is to be found today, and the training is identical now with them for each one who travels this path finds the burning bush. 7. Moses was possibly the greatest initiate of his time. For it is said that he excelled even his own teachers in the mystic arts, and no mention seems to be made of the burning bush before his time. 8. Daniel was another great initiate of this same school. Master thyself and thou shalt be master over all things in heaven and on earth. Daniel accomplished this as is absolutely proven in his experience in the lion's den. This was nothing unnatural, nothing that cannot now be understood, for we can find men today, initiates of these great schools, in both India and Egypt, who can do this very same thing in regard to these monarchs of the forest. 9. The Kabbalisti numbers and astrology are but a part of the exoderate teachings of the great occult schools of both the Indian and Egyptian schools, and we know that the true masters of these arts can too, they foretell future events as did the wise men of old. Again, there is the inner or esoteric of these arts which is known as intuition, and which is the highest quality of the human soul, 1. He who develops rightly as is taught in both the imperial order and in the Egyptian schools will learn too his statutes with great firmness. It is also evident in the book of Samuel that the Burelis did not follow the devil's part, but became, by divine permission, partakers of visions and veritable apparitions, whereof we shall treat more at length. This gift is granted by the Lord God to those priests who walk in the divine precepts. 2. It was a custom among the Persians never to admit anyone as king unless he were a wise man. 3. Preeminent in reality as well as in name.
This is clear from the customary names of their kings, for they were called wise men. Such were those wise men and Persian magi who came from the east to seek out the Lord Jesus, and are called natural priests. The Egyptians, also, having obtained this magic and philosophy from the Chaldeans and Persians, desired that their priests should learn the same wisdom, and they came so fruitful and successful therein that all the neighboring countries admired them. For this reason Hermes was so truly named Trismegistus, because he was a king, a priest, a prophet, a magician, and a sophist of natural things. Such another was Zoroaster to be continued know the laws of God and understand them. To do this will mean that man will find, as did Socrates, the still small voice within. This is the interior illumination, or supreme initiation and is nothing unnatural. Once man reaches this he will know that he is immortal, too. To walk in the divine precepts is but to live a perfectly natural life and follow the higher order or development. If this is done, all the higher powers of the soul will be developed, and man in reality becomes a Christo, ye are the temples of the living God. 3. This was the time in the history of the world when initiate kings were the rule. All those who were made kings had first to be initiates. This was no impossibility at that time, and no impostor could be seated upon the throne, for there were tests which made this impossible. The statue Egypt Letter Cairo, Egypt, February 2, 1908, Editor of the Initiates, Allentown, Par I expected to have prepared an article in time for the April issue of the Initiates. But as I have been so extremely busy during the last month I will of necessity be compelled to postpone the article on ancient faith. For the next issue, I have been thinking this night of the faithful of our band in the United States of America, who are pushing forward our grand teachings into the souls of man after the methods of the day, as only those in a country like Gideon do. Again, my mind reverts back countless ages, long past, and almost forgotten, when truth was taught after the customs of that age. Again methinks I see the kings of that day kneeling before the altars of self-sacrifice, that is, in love to the people, but that peaceful and harmonious scene passes and another is ushered in when. Discontent among the race is everywhere to be seen, education neglected, kings no longer serve, but demand service, and men became slaves to a tyrant's rule. Idolatry follows close in the footsteps of him who closed temples and forbade both worship and study, that in the end of they, the kings, might behold beautiful structures of masonry. Oh, foolish kings, to destroy those monuments of truth, which would have been glory unto you through countless ages and passing worlds, that by enslaving your race you could erect monuments that will only last for a season and become sand and dust. To the ages of misery and longing after true wisdom, centuries pass, as fleeting hours and the eastern star arises to guide the homeless pilgrim to the new birth, Again one reaches the heights of initiation and unto men a path is shown more beautiful, better understood by the masses than the original forms. Hail, thou elder brother, prince of peace, thou hast done more for thy race than those who came before thee, even Avinicius, Trifonius, Minos, Erechtheus or Cenerus. Como el logier melio eranean. Again methinks I see the destruction of the Alexandrian library and the Bible given to humanity. Oh, what a factor in again turning the eyes of humanity to immortality of the soul. How close upon the heels of this noble work came the Dark Ages. These again almost completed the work of idolatrous kings. But this could not be. I think I can see now a father of that age clinging to death to that soul food, the Bible, when to have it, let it be but known. That he possessed this book, and it would immediately have brought down upon his person and family the maledictions of priest rule. Today the world is again in search of wisdom as never before, and the forces of nature are subject to deeper study than at any time since the days of our ancient brethren, and who knows the benefit that will accrue to coming generations, in no age since history first began has man learned to use so many of the hidden forces of nature as he has in the past century. Steam, telegraph, telephone, reproduction of the human voice, and lastly, wireless telegraphy, not considering other great discoveries, surely man can no longer scoff and say nature holds no invisible, intelligent forces. And yet, 
With the many thousands of discoveries in recent years, we can safely say man has but began to see the possibilities of what may be done if peace and harmony are preserved, letting wars and strife, malice and evil no longer disturb the soul of man. Again, this will only be greater in proportion to the desire of man to benefit his fellow creatures, and not to better crush them in the struggle for vanishing gold. But we are taught the laws of evolution are the laws of God, and all will be accomplished in God's good time, but those of us who have labored low, these many years, how impatient we grow to see our race enjoy more of nature's blessings, how we sigh at their sorrow.